This is what we call the Malinois Circle of Death. Enough. They are the most extreme breed on the planet and the premier choice for the most intense tasks. So today we learn the top 10 things that make today's modern Malinois. Most people hear extreme and they think aggressive, a dog who only wants to bite. Or they think of a dog with an insane need for exercise and an inability to relax. It's because he's poop pop. This has many believing a bitey, extreme drive nature are the only things that make a Malinois. This is only one side of the coin and it's what has the breed becoming synonymous with a neurotic mess. Focus. <laughs> what makes a Malinois extreme is not their ability yeah, to oh, exist us in the crazy, wild end of the spectrum. It's their ability to exist on an extreme range of the spectrum. In the modern day, protection dogs aren't just vicious guardians that don't leave their property. They're companions that must be able to perform their duty in any environment. Even though he's tired, we are still kind of in training mode and he can stay with me in the contact heel. So let's find out what traits the modern Malinois possess that allow them to go anywhere and perform their work in an extreme manner, but be a go with the flow member of the family. He's mine. A great Malinois starts with the perfect storm of genetics. All of my Malinois come from long lines of NVBK dogs, AKA Belgian ring. And here we have a wild group of Malinois in their natural habitat. Most important is at their core, chaotic stressful situations trigger them to feel an inner calm, become laser focused, and they are possessed by an enthusiasm for conquering any challenge. Being relaxed in a high amount of stress is just the beginning. The next attribute they must possess is an internal locus of control, couché. A psychology term that refers to how much they believe their actions control their destiny. There's couché. An external locus of control means they think that the external world controls how happy they are. A dog like this who has an insane internal locus of control has confidence, believes that his actions are what control his destiny and allows him to be a partner in training. Couché, here. And not just a participant, helper. He thinks that these actions are what gets him his reward, not just pleasing me. Keep up. Poopy. Ah, dear, this poopy. Puck. Couché. People accuse me of having dogs that are just robots. Puck. But a dog with this much confidence, agency, ugh, he would get into so much trouble and become a f unruly. Puck. Because he is going to get what he wants no matter what. A f but it also gives us a dog who isn't phased by me or any other person. A dog who's confident they can make the world their plaything isn't enough. They must possess the ability to make that belief a reality. Keep it out. <coughs> Intelligence is a crucial aspect of this. Oh, Smart dogs don't see the world in black and white. To them, the world is more than death traps and safe places. They don't have to bark like crazy at every noise or get threatened at a statue they see. We built this scary snowman and told the dogs to bite the sleeve. They weren't phased a bit. To them, it's just a shelf that holds their favorite toy. Us. Intelligence also gives us a dog who can learn to solve problems and have good judgment, figuring out what I want so that she can learn to have what she wants. Keep it out. In addition to calculating what I want, intelligence allows her to overcome obstacles that enable to get her what she wants. Puck. We've never rehearsed this tunnel and she had zero trouble figuring out how to reverse out to free herself and secure her target. Oh, she just, oh, she just that thing. A good indicator of intelligence is will they go away from their reward to get it. A test we use to assess this is whether or not they can go away from me to get to me.
The test is initially done without any practice. Otherwise, it's just training. Oh, she's staying. She's staying. We'll try. Let's do this thing. Another test we have is can a dog unravel yeah. themselves on a leash to get back to me? And she's just staying. Not a problem at all. For a thing. Touch. Us. Focus. Fuck. She's got that focus. Cause she's dang. Cause she's dang. Cause she's dang. Cause she's dang. In order to put confidence and intelligence to work, we need something the dog desires. This is where food and prey drive come into play. We use food in the basics of luring to build positions. Teach them a to bark, and also the beginnings of impulse control. We also use food to create positive associations with new environments, like slick floors in a store, grooming tools, such as brushing and the nail grinder, and of course, making the vet less stressful. Sometimes it isn't always feasible to use food. We can only carry so much, they get full, we may want to do training that's physically demanding, and we don't want to hurt their stomach. But you can use the ball in a similar manner. Here, a ball. To how we use the food. But we can also work us on the out. Working for kibble or ball isn't enough for a protection dog. They must also have a great grip. Fuck. Oh. Pushing, uh, 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 penetrating, and full. Us. Because we want the dog to be biting the person inside the sleeve, not just tugging on material. Fuck. Oh. That allows us to have a dog who us oh. incapacitates quicker, but also does less damage. Ulrich is pure power. This is a training Mondio suit, so thick, and look at the damage from this single bite. Having the ability to bite like the jaws of life is great, but bite work, even for a protection dog, is a small part of their life. Us. We need a dog who isn't neurotic, that can relax and go with the flow of life. If their family has a relaxing day, a great Malinois can enjoy that. They simply exist without stressing out. Being in a multi-dog household, I want dogs who are social, loves to be around me and other dogs. Being able to have them play together, do simultaneous training, and do pack walks is crucial to ensure every dog gets their mental, emotional, and physical needs met. Let's see what this thing will do for a single itty bitty little piece of kibble. She's dang. She's staying. She's staying. Watch out. Oh, she's just staying. She's like, oh, but she slipped. <laughs> oh, but that didn't affect a thing. That didn't affect a thing. Oh. I ran her into the weights and she still didn't care. Came back and got some. Oh, am I dropping them? Came back and got some focus. That's what a thing can do with her food drive. Cushy! Is she sad? Three, two, one.